working on the role and the son and, and like in the lord's why, prayer why, why, and why, the lord's why do you want to call jesus the father if it's not the father taking on flesh say that again why do you want to keep calling uh jesus the father if you don't really think it's the father taking on flesh is, like i told you from the beginning god can he manifested himself in the bush but he was still on throne when jesus was on the earth part of part of god was inside of this and this is where we don't agree part of god was inside of jesus jesus was not fully god if god stepped down on this earth and his glory his glorious body we would not be able to handle it i like moses moses couldn't even handle looking at a reflection of god through the burning bush so obviously god couldn't just step down here on the earth because we the the, the power was so great that moses couldn't even take that so you think that if God just walked down here and he didn't wrap himself in flesh, that we, we would be able to handle it? We wouldn't. Well, it doesn't say wrapped himself in flesh. It's same, it says he became flesh, which implies right. a union between two natures, which, by the way, oneness also denies, which is um, historically a heresy to try and separate and, and um, divide the two natures as if they can interact in conversation. Um, we would say they can be distinguished but not divided, but that's a whole nother issue. There's philosophical problems with modalism too, but the issue here is, so you want to say it's not the Father, it was God, then why say whoever, then why did you bring up the verse that's calling him everlasting Father and saying whoever has seen me has seen the Father? See, because that's what the Bible says. He says, I'm the Father. It's just, it's it's a, it's a uh, like for instance, in the Lord's Prayer, you told me that you said that when you pray, you sometimes you pray to the father and sometimes you pray to the son so you spend some time with the father and then you spend some time with the son so why when the disciples asked how should we pray he didn't say hey sometimes you're going to pray to the me sometimes you're going to pray to the father knowing that he was going to leave knowing what the father's will was and die why would he give them an improper format to pray when they're just praying uh, to that father because he, he, he of course he gave us a pr i don't understand the question does do you think he also says the apostles, that he, the apostles the apostles when he was teaching them how to pray he didn't teach them that you know hey you're gonna you're gonna pray to the father and then you're gonna pray to the son he just told them to pray to the father because he's one but you say that you pray you pray different than the apostles you pray to the father sometimes and then you pray to the son sometimes and then jesus, i asked him what he, jesus does say he he answers our prayers so, so in, in your mind, Jesus is not the name of God. Jesus is the name of the God man, the second person of the Trinity. Jesus isn't the name of the Father or the Spirit. So when they sing those songs in your churches and they're calling on the name of Jesus, they're not really fully worshiping because they're only worshiping the God man part. So in your mind, no, it would be fully worshiping because everything that the Father is, is in Christ. There's no differentiation in nature or substance. It's the fullness of God just in a distinct person. That's why we so can't everything, worship. So everything that God is is inside of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't say it's inside of him. Everything that God is, Christ is. Christ has in and of himself. But what's as the scripture to say? Does it say the fullness is in Jesus Christ or as Jesus Christ? Does it say in? What is the word? The fullness of God pleased to dwell in Christ. In Christ. So the fullness in of God. Him. Christ. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the fullness of deity, as it would say in the ESP. So the fullness of God is in Jesus Christ. That's what it says. It doesn't mean the fullness of the Father. See, that's that's the that's the thing. But how can it be? How can you exclude? How can you exclude the Father? If you're saying that the Father and the, the Holy Spirit, this is God, and the Bible saying the fullness of this, the fullness of the Godhead, right here, is in Jesus Christ. I'm confused. Well, we can say that, let me retract that, we can say the fullness of the Father was in Christ, but the fullness of the Father, the, the indwelling of the Father in Christ is not responsible for the deity of Christ. The deity of Christ he had distinct from the Father from from the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. It's not, it's not distinct. It says the fullness. You, you're saying this is God, but this is the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All of those are included in the Godhead. This right here, this image is inside of Jesus Christ. So if it's inside of Jesus Christ, how is the name of this not yeah, Jesus? How is the name of God not Jesus? It says all throughout scripture that we, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That does not mean that we are Christ and that Christ is us. The Christ that is in us is the Holy Spirit. That's why in John 14, 16, 18, he laid his body down, glorified body, sent the comforter. And he clearly says in John 14, that he's the comforter. 
it doesn't, no, it doesn't make, make me the Holy Spirit. It's part of God inside of me. His Holy the Spirit. Father, the Father dwelling in Christ does not make him the Father any more than the Holy Spirit dwelling in you makes you the Holy Spirit. Why? Because, because that's your interpretation? Because the Bible clearly says that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in Jesus Christ. It says and, that. And, and we are in Christ. And Jesus prays in John 17. Here's what he says. Father, I pray that they may be one even as we are one. Right, says, and that's just my, as just as you and I are one, I want them all to be one with exactly. another. How, that's my point. How do they become one? That's the whole reason I made no, this no, chart. Marcus, you have to I, let me finish that point. That is an absolute knockdown argument against this position. Jesus is saying, Father, in the same way that you and I are one, I want you to make all of them one. That means one, oneness of spirit, oneness of purpose, oneness of as one unit. And oneness how does of body. He do that? How do he do it? How does he, person. he does that through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Right, exactly. So me, I'm a body and I'm a soul and I receive the spirit. That's what makes me one. That's it makes what, you one in spirit, not one in person. Huh? It makes you one in spirit with the Holy Spirit no, it, and with it Christ. It doesn't, make you, it doesn't make you Christ himself. I never said it made me Christ himself. So if Jesus saying that the Father is in me, the Bible says the fullness of the Father is in Jesus, that does not make Jesus the Father any any more than it says. No, it the says Holy the Spirit fullness is in you of would the make Godhead. It says the fullness, of, it doesn't say Father, it's the fullness of the Godhead. If you believe that this is God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? You're saying that that's God, that's Yahweh. It says that Yahweh is inside of Jesus Christ. Everything that Yahweh is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is in no, 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 not, not see we're, we're not when we talk about the fullness of the godhead we're not talking about the fullness of three persons we're talking about the fullness of divine attributes no divine no characteristics the fullness of the godhead the fullness of the godhead is father son and holy spirit and, and, that's what and, completes and, the godhead yeah you're using the kjv which is not it, it's not any no historical argument could be used to defend that as the best translation but even if we take the the kjv you're assuming that fullness of the Godhead refers to a person instead of the fullness of what God is. I'm not assuming that it refers to a person. Fullness of the Godhead means this. This is the fullness of the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Nothing outside of it. What's inside of it? And this That's is inside of it. Is it, says, it says in Colossians 2.9 in the ESV, the fullness of deity dwells in him. It's referring to the fullness of the divine nature. Right. God, is, God is deity, right? Is God not deity? God is deity, and as right. is the Father, so Son, and Spirit. The same, and, it's the same thing. God is deity, and God is made up of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that is inside Jesus Christ. And either way you no, put it, you keep saying the same thing. That's not, that's not what the fullness of deity means. It doesn't mean the full. That doesn't mean that, um, like I said, that Jesus Christ is the Father and is the Spirit. It just wouldn't. Why? You're making that interpretation. This is God, right? According to you, this is God, Father, like, Son, and Holy Spirit. Think, have cognition. To, to act upon things that you think, to will, to choose. Jesus clearly has that. And he says, I am going to submit my will to your will. We can't imagine here that Jesus is having this conversation with himself. If that's what you believe, then you are not being honest about what the scriptures are telling you. You're not being honest about what you are reading. If you're walking away with the idea that the son and the father are all the same person jesus then 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 you 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 can't possibly have the right understanding of what jesus did at the cross because it was not the father who suffered that old patra passion heresy of the third century uh was refuted soundly on the basis of scripture by the early church because the early church understood that it was not the father who came and the father who suffered because the father is only spirit only deity the holy spirit is only spirit deity they shared that one essence of being but the son who is deity took on humanity hence he is the only member of the trinity that suffered at the cross he is the only member of the Trinity that died at the cross. The Son, the Son is a distinct person from the Holy Spirit and the Father. Yet all three share the same oneness of being, all of the attributes, 
whereby or wherewith what all of the attributes that make them God are all shared by the three persons. As to their identity, however, they are different persons. They relate to each other. In fact, the very word love, the very idea of love, the very idea of love uh, 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 presumes, presupposes rather, that you are all, all automatically talking about more than one person because you cannot have love. And the Bible says God is love. So as to his nature, God is love. But how is that true if God is a unipersonal being? That is, God is one being and one person, just like we are. See, we are simple beings. So we are only one being and one person. But God is one being, three persons. So he is, is a, he's a complex being. So when you try to understand God by looking at you, you're jacking up already. Didn't he already tell you I'm not like you? Didn't he already say my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts? So you can't use what is in essence a simple being, whereas your being and your person are, in, are, 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 are connected in your human experience. You cannot use that in order to understand God's complex being. Whereas he is one being, but he is three persons. And, 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 and so you, you've got to under, you've got to, you've got to understand that. And so how could God be love and never share it? There's, there's no, it's the love has an object and a recipient. And if God is love, who was he throughout eternity sharing love with if he is only one person and one being? Well, I'll tell you, Jesus says, you've loved me. You have loved me in the past tense. And, and, and I shared glory with you in the past tense. That's one person sharing something with another. Let the, let the scriptures talk to you. Get, get your head out of that David K. Bernard book and get it in the Bible. You see? And, and, and so the very the very idea of love presupposes that God not only is love as to his intrinsic nature, but he acted in love. And so the son is the recipient of the father's love. The Holy Spirit is the recipient of the son's love and vice versa. Love has an object and a recipient to it. So 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 we, we've got to understand those things. These are only things. That can be true of persons, persons love, persons communicate with each other intelligently. Persons will, persons send, persons receive, persons share, persons appoint, persons glorify. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he says, the Father and I will come to you. We will make our Monet, our abode with you. We, we, not me, we. What part of we is singular? What part of we don't you understand? We will make, and then he says, and then my Father will send the Comforter, and he, he is a person. He will come to you. He. <clears throat> Do you see that? John, John chapter 14. So, 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 so we, we've got to get this. This is, this is essential to your Christian faith that you embrace the doctrine of the Trinity. This is not optional, friends. It's not optional. Forget what you've been told. Forget what you, you think you know. It's not optional. It's essential to Christian faith. It's essential to it. Because if you don't get God right, you don't get Christ right. And if you don't get Christ right, you don't get salvation right. Because the view that Jesus is just playing three roles, modalistic monarchianism, actually, when you carry that argument out to its furthest point, it actually empties Jesus of his divinity. It actually undermines the, the divinity of Christ because it posits the idea that Jesus simply had divinity in him, that he had a human side 
and a divine side, acting as it were two different persons within Jesus. There are various uh, names for that in, um, in uh, church history. Nestorianism uh, comes to mind, is, 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 is one of the uh, ancient heresies that kind of carried this idea uh, of um, uh, almost like, um, what do they call it? Dynamic incarnation. It is, it, it, it's kind of, I call it the container theory. So, so, so these are the kind of persons that interpret the text, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself as though he had the spirit of the father on the inside of him. Well, if Christ merely had God's spirit on the inside of him, then that doesn't make him God. That makes him a man with God in him, just like me and you. And, 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 so, and, and so I find it interesting that some people who beat you upside the head with Jesus is God, Jesus is God, Jesus is God, their own theology actually undermines the, the deity of Jesus because it, it rejects his distinct person, personage from the Father. And when you do that, you are on a slippery slope.